Namaskaram, Banakam Chennai. It's my pleasure to be here at this conference uh, on employability and I thank uh, Nandini of Lotus Foundation and Shanti for giving this uh, opportunity to reach out to you guys and share my views uh, through the video. I wish I could be uh, there present with all of you and I'm sure you're having a wonderful uh, exchange of thoughts and ideas. Um, so since the topic is uh, employability, I thought I would share my uh, experiences and my views uh, specifically about how to, uh, you know, how does one make a person with autism employable. So uh, while there are wonderful stories, uh, which even I have personally experienced, where we've been able to place uh, young people with uh, autism, uh, in, uh, you know, uh, large multinational companies and banks and there are a lot of people working to make work uh, places more uh, accessible and inclusive and uh, there are a number of organizations who are imparting these skills that help them to get placed in the mainstream organization. I would like to focus on these uh, students or children um, whichever way you would like to call them, uh, who are uh, obviously uh, discarded as not employable, as not, uh, you know, of no use to us or society. And I'd like to start with sharing my personal experience in this area. So I have a son who is 23 now, and uh, in the early years, uh, like any other parent, I spent uh, a lot of time trying to make my son uh, read, to speak, to write, and also to behave. And this is what uh, was taught to me as the important skills that uh, you need to learn in order to write exams, in order to attend interviews, and in order to get employed to have a life of his own. But these things were very difficult for my son. And the more I tried to make him learn these things, the more uh, obvious it uh, became, uh, you know, became to me and to everyone else that he was not going to ever fit in. He was obvious, he was that obvious square peg that doesn't fit in the round hole. And uh, so we started looking for options which, uh, you know, would uh, not involve speaking academics or uh, even uh, options that would include people with uh, you know, uh, social and behavioral challenges, but we actually found no options. And uh, the other thing was that he had a mind of his own and did not know how to regulate it. He resisted whatever directions we gave him. So we were left at a point, you know, a, a sort of a junction in life where we just had a, 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 about two or three options. The first one was to just give up and uh, let him remain so-called burden uh, on others. And this was scary. This was really scary because who would care for him? And uh, we also saw that obviously he was not happy sitting idle. And um, so he would, uh, if not engaged, he would engage in unwanted sort of activities. Um, the other option was to continue to push him and squeeze him into these mainstream options but it was becoming a no deal. Uh, and it was not about just his uh, abilities or skills, but it was just making him unhappy and uh, sometimes even aggressive and uh, self-injurious. So um, we decided that the third option, which is to allow him to lead us, uh, uh, allow him to lead us with what he would like to uh, explore and hopefully we would discover something along the way. Now this option had no guarantees. We had no idea what we would discover, but this was the only option that gave our son uh, a level of dignity as a human being. And so we chose uh, that option. And in order to do so, we had to uh, do a couple of things, you know. Uh, we had to shift a paradigm we had to uh, firstly get rid of all our mainstream expectations uh, in, in terms of, uh, you know, our own expectations in terms of 
you know, uh, what uh, academic uh, status he should reach or what should be our family income and expectations, what should be our lifestyle. Even the relationship between uh, me and my husband, uh, you know, as parents, how we are going to behave. So it, it, it needed a lot of realignment in all these areas as well as uh, we had to realign the social structure around us, which is move away from certain traditional structures and, you know, move into something which was more like a exploration mode, which was non-traditional. And uh, so my husband actually quit his job. We downsized our standards of living. We moved to a smaller city and stopped having, you know, any expectation really from society or our family to help us or understand us. This was also a realignment that we did. So the first step that we took, and uh, I like to give it a title, is Explore. So we started becoming these hippies of autism, as I like to call ourselves, enjoying the journey with not many expectations, except that uh, our son is comfortable in whatever he's doing. We explored nature, we explored art, cooking, music, sports, cycling, computer-based activities. Um, we tried many activities within, like for example in art, we tried painting, we tried making things with different materials, weaving, graphic arts, and we tried these activities for three to six months. And the criteria for trying these activities or continuing was that he was interested in these activities. And then um, we would try to then slowly push the level up uh, for independence or complexity of that activity, provided he likes to uh, you know, do that activity and would engage. So that's the next word, explore. And then we found that he is ready to engage in certain activities throughout the day. We found uh, things that he could do in a sustained manner for two hours, say two or three hours, like cooking, like art-based work or graphic media on the computer. Uh, he was also willingly doing, say, cycling for five to six kilometers, some fitness activities. He did not say like athletics, so we stopped doing that. And he listened to music all the time, uh, whether it was on his uh, iPad or sing live singing. And he cannot sing or play the keyboard or the tabla or all these things that we tried. But this was an activity that he was ready to do as a, uh, you know, as a listener. And so we continued that activity. We encouraged it. Similarly, in art, he seemed to like to do this fine work, you know, with certain beads or, uh, and uh, he, he was just copying designs, but he was engaged with it. And he even started uh, liking to do jigsaw puzzles for a long period of time. So we slowly increased the complexity and he was doing 200, 300. So all this time, we were not thinking about employment or employability. We were just finished with exploring and then we we're figuring out that these are certain activities that our son would engage with. So at this point, since we found that we could move away from the mainstream sort of pattern and get him to engage and uh, give him dignity in what he's doing and he uh, also had calmed down a lot, we uh, took a few more others like him through the Amaze Charitable Trust and we went through the same process with those uh, interns also and discovered that at the end of six months or even a year with this sort of an approach which allows them to explore multiple activities and find out uh, you know, what they would like to engage themselves in was actually working out. And many of these uh, interns that we took were actually dropouts even from special schools, let alone mainstream systems because they had, uh, uh, you know, uh, behaviors that were really challenging. And uh, the parents were at the wit's end as to what to do. But within a year or so, we found that these young men and women were able to engage with certain activities uh, willingly. And uh, some of them were now, uh, you know, now we were able to identify that within this bunch of interns, uh, certain uh, what their abilities were, what their interests were. 
and so we we the next as the next step felt that they need to now start doing real work so we needed to create a process that generated work for them and so we started selling some of our art based products for example uh, and we also started running a program for younger children at ama so that uh, our older interns could create content for the younger children on a regular basis our programs are all customized so there is a daily content that needs to be created for the younger ones we also started running a canteen within the uh, within a maze where uh, the interns had to cook lunch and snacks for ranging from 10 to 30 people and we slowly even started taking orders from outside so uh, creating a process um, with certain products which were not products we had decided in the beginning but they were products that came out of what uh, processes uh, really engage these people so the approach was explore engage and then it was for people centered and then process centered and the product was more or less a by product of what kept them engaged and so through this approach um, you know we were uh, able to successfully uh, generate enough work for these 5 uh, to 6 interns that we had piloted our project with and we saw a great growth in their abilities once they were doing the real work in terms of self regulation in terms of team work in terms of taking charge and being responsible for themselves in terms of the ability to push themselves further because they actually saw that their products were going out of the door they were being used and it was not just repetitive work that had no meaning or purpose so they were really motivated now these children who had severe challenging behaviors and we had no idea what their interests and abilities were and they were a challenge even to hold at home were now actually motivated so now uh, uh, uh they are at the end of at the end of almost 5 years of working with them we started this process in 2014 they are uh, you know we have a uh, an ecosystem if i may say so where they thrive and uh, the cost of that has been high so we are not actually paying the interns we don't believe in token remuneration to them because the cost of creating this in ecosystem for them was high they needed close supervision they needed adaptations they needed uh, you know a lot of uh, supports in the environment like they needed sensory supports they needed visual supports they needed work systems to be created they needed job coaches so um uh, uh, they are not getting paid right now but they are at the threshold where they can get paid only two persons that we currently hire hire are paid because they are totally independent they don't need any supervision but in the past year uh, we have sold so many teaching aids uh, across the country as well as art based products um so uh, the revenue has been coming um, in and so that that is a real uh, test because when we talk about employability or employment we are saying working for money that's the definition that's normally um, you know sort of uh, uh, taken and uh, so uh, now we know that mainstream society will uh, buy our products they'll buy our food they'll buy our artwork they there are um, you know a customer base for our teaching aids and uh, uh, they are not doing it as a charity it is because they see value in the product so we are ready to scale up our operations and we are planning to set up an accessible work hub that will include a professional kitchen a laundry you know laundry service a data center an art studio and we are also in the process of setting up a farm hub because some of our interns were not able to work in any of these uh, structured systems and they wanted to be outdoors more of, most of the time and they have been doing a farm internship and uh, so we are setting up a farm hub where we'll do organic farming and uh, you know maybe some animal uh, farm dog breeding also so we've seen just this year 2019 has been a really good year we've seen leaps in our interns nishant is now creating his own designs with his coasters 
and we thought he had no imagination or creativity all these years. Yogesh, for example, is cycling with the cycling, a mainstream cycling group, and he is, goes beyond 100 kilometers in every weekend. And we never thought he could be a part of any group uh, at, in the beginning. And uh, Gokul is a, is a perfect chef. He can follow a recipe to the T with no errors. Shashwat is independent with creating worksheets. And Mithilesh is rocking in his performances. This is our first batch from July 2015, 14, rather, 2014. So it took us five years. It's like a combined master's degree that they've done. We have two more batches of five students each, and they are very different from the first five. So there is no repetition except of the core beliefs and the core processes we have. Uh, the approach is individualized for each one of them, and they are blooming. And so like the name of our program for these interns, AMEA, which is the MACE program for mentoring and empowerment of young adults, which is in the name of Lord Ganesha, it has shown us that they have boundless potential. We truly believe that there are infin infinite possibilities. The core of all this is a positive belief in our students, in our children. If we let them, they will show us the way, and they can. Thank you very much.